Hello and welcome back to yet another episode of Open Scad. We get to make them fancy shapes and not. Today's episode is all about transformations and all the cool stuff they can do. We can make cool stuff with them. We can make cool stuff. First, we got to figure out what these transformations are. So here, I got a cone that we made last time, and a cube. And I really want them separate. But, I, but so how do we make them separate? Well, there's a line that's very similar to cube, only it does something very different called translate. Type it in, just like cube, you type in translate, parenthesis, bracket, and then your first number, which is the distance on the x-axis, your second number, which will be your distance on your y-axis, and your third number, which will be your distance on your z-axis. Close it with your bracket and parenthesis, and this time don't end the line with a semicolon. Press F5, and now our cube has moved over 10 millimeters on the x-axis, back 20 millimeters, and up 30 millimeters. And we can make any of these values zero if we want to just keep that level the same, like keep them on the floor, which could be very useful. Another one we could do that would be very interesting is we could rotate. Say let's uh, let's say we want to move the cylinder a little. Let's do a rotate. Type it in rotate parenthesis bracket, and this time you type in the number of degrees you want to rotate around the axis on. So let's say we want to rotate 45 degrees on the x-axis, 90 degrees on the y-axis and uh, 75 degrees on the z-axis. Close off your line, no parenthesis this time. And now we have this weird orientation that makes uh, kind of confusing. But it looks cool. Looks like it's going through the cube. I it stabbed it. Anyway, but if we take off this 75 on the z-axis, you can see that it's pointing in that direction. Then 45 on the x-axis. Nope, oh, need a zero there. Need a zero. You gotta make sure you replace it with zeros. So now we see that the 90 degrees around the y-axis has made the tip go from pointing up here to pointing over here. So it didn't actually move any on the y-axis. What it did is it moved around the y-axis. Same is true if we were to move it around 90 on the x-axis. So that now it moved around the x-axis to line up instead of with the z-axis to line up with the y-axis. It also works with the z-axis, although uh, you can't really tell the difference with a cylinder. There's a couple other things we could do, though, like that you can tell the difference with. So let's try scale. Here's another one, scale. Again, same lines for this. Still the parenthesis and bracket. Only this time, it's the number you want to multiply the dimension by. So the first one is your x-axis. Let's say we want to make this thing five times bigger on the x-axis. So now whatever values in the x-axis, currently um, 20, will be multiplied by 5. We can do this with the y-axis, let's say 2, and also with the z-axis, 7, and we get this, which is very tall, kind of flat, and elliptical. It's an ellipse. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Or if you want still a cone, you type in just all same number, you end up with still a cone, it's just bigger cool, huh? And one more that's kind of nice. 
but works differently is color. So we type in color. Now there's two ways to do this. My favorite is just put parenthesis, quotation mark, and then the name of the color you want. Say red, and end off the line. And now we have a red cone. Works with most basic colors, although the, the advanced ones are kind of vague. It's not perfect just yet. But now, now that we know all these transformations, let's make something cool, huh? How about, let's see, what can we make that's cool? Hmm. Let's make a camera. Yeah, we can make a camera. Let's make a camera. Cool cameras. So let's see. Make a camera. We're going to need a back. We could do that with our cube. Let's make it a 40. No, no, wrong dimension, wrong dimension. 40. Hey, does that look about right for a cube? I think that looks a little short. Let's make it 50. That looks about right for a camera. Yeah, it's about right. Sweet. But it's not centered. That's like that can be hard to work with. So let's translate it over. Tab. And now we translate. Translate. And uh, we want to move it to where it's center on the centered on the x-axis. So let's translate it over negative 25. That way half of it moves backwards on the x-axis. See, see, half of it moves backwards. And then the rest of it, we don't really need it to move. So we just do zeros. And now our cube is centered. So let's see, what else do we need for a camera? We need, um, we need, we need a lens. And we can do that with our cylinder. To make slightly tapered, say eight. That'll make a nice lens. But it's pointing the wrong way, so we can rotate it. Rotate, rotate. And we want it to point out in this direction. So that would be, if we look down here, that's the x-axis going this way. So let's rotate it around the x-axis 90 degrees. Don't need it to rotate any other ways. End off the line. Now it's pointing the right direction, but it's not quite the right height. So let's translate it. Let's translate. Setting up. Translate. So to get to translate, we need to move it up to where the middle is centered on the center of this. So half of the height of it, which is 30. So we can move it up. We don't need to move it over any. We don't need to move it back any. We need to move it up 15. Okay. Then we end off our line. Now our, now our lens is pretty centered. I think I want to make it a little bigger. I'm getting nitpicky with this now. And that looks that looks decent enough. It's still missing something. Uh, it's missing something. It's missing something. That's right, and it's a button. It's a button. We need a button. Let's 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 do a sphere. You know where I do a sphere, right? Sphere. And then let's just make it five. Yeah, that looks like about the right size. Hmm. So how are we gonna get this up? there. Let's see, uh, rotate doesn't really help much since uh, it's a sphere. Spheres don't, they aren't any different when they rotate. We can translate it. Let's see, translate. So we translate this, translate it, we, let's, we gotta move it up by the height of the cube. We have to move it over by about a quarter of the length, then back half the width. Let's see, move it over a quarter of the length, that is a quarter of 50, which is half of 25, which if I did my math correctly is 17.5. Hopefully I'm still not half bad at head math. Then we need halfway back, so 10. 
and then up the height of our the camera at five and now we have a button there but the the button looks kind of kind of small I think I think it looks small so let's enter and here we can use our scale so let's do scale uh, let's make it sort of elongated yeah that's a good idea so on the x-axis let's do 1.5 you don't really need it any bigger on the y-axis. I mean, that looks pretty good. 1.5. So let's make that 1. So that multiplies by 1. We get the same number. But that button's really, really tall. So I want to make it kind of shorter. So let's do 0.5 on the z. And then we finish off the line. F5. Whoa. Hey. And moved and, and messed with our translating, too. Yeah, some of these some of these uh transformations don't get along too well and you have to finagle your way in placements. Let's see maybe if we put our scale under the translate. There we go. That's a nice button. That makes a nice button. I that that's not a bad camera, I don't think. Let's see. Let's see, can we make it any better though? Uh let, let's use our color. We haven't used our color. What color should we make the body of this? Let's do black. I wonder if it knows black. I've actually never had it asked it to do black yet. Let's make it black. Yeah, it knows black. It's very dark though. Let's see if it knows silver. Let's see silver. There we go. It knows silver. Uh, we can make our lens here new color. Let's do color. Uh, let's do this one black. Yeah, black. Uh, hello, camera. Oh, I need quotes. Need quotes. You gotta have quotes around your words. Yeah, that that's that's also very that's very dark. Let's do a let's do a happy color like um. Let's do blue. Blue five. Yeah, that's that's bluish. That's pretty bluish. Hmm. It's really really bright though. Let's see. I think there's a way you can do this differently. Do a RGB color code. Anyone familiar with those? So let's do. First number would be R, Z, G, zero, and B. Five, and that should get us the color we got right now. No, don't. Okay, that is pure blue. So now we can adjust these numbers to get the number we want. Whoa, it's white. It's white, it's white, it's white. We want darker. Darker, darker, darker blue. Let's try making it 200 instead of 255. Let's try making it 100. F5? Hello? Hello? Um, 50? Huh. Apparently it's not working. So, blue. That works just fine. <laughs> Never had that happen before, where it just doesn't work. And then the button. Uh, you know what? I kind of like the button. I like the color of the button. Yeah, that's a good button color. Alright, well, we have a camera. We went over basic transformations and got to use most of our shapes. I think this was a pretty good episode. We made a lot of progress. Next time, we get to go over modular code. Yeah, complicated stuff. Don't worry, it's actually really simple. It's actually even easier than this. Or, or this. It's, about, it's, it's a lot easier than that, actually. And we'll get to go over that in the next episode. So I'll see you later. Bye.